This is Craig with Garshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks. For objective 3.2, manage table styles and options. Let's get started. With our 3.2 workbook open, we want to change the style of the table on our sales worksheet. So as long as we click any cell within our table, we can go into our table tools design contextual menu. And here we have all of our style selections. I'm going to choose the drop down arrow on the right hand side, which gives me a gallery for all of the different styles. And in the medium section, I'm going to be looking for style number 19. And on my particular computer, that is this gold table style medium 19. You can see a preview as I cycle through these of how it's going to look. Once I've chosen the one I'm interested in, I can select it and we go back to our table here and can see the difference from where it was before. Next, we want to configure this so that it alternates rows with different fill colors. So again, with any cell in our table selected, we can go into our design. And what we want to do here is have banded rows. So with banded rows, now each of our rows is a different color. It makes it easier to follow. Okay, David, all the way across to the right-hand side here and not get confused. We just stay in that pale one. Next, we also want to do the same thing except with the columns. In this case, just the first and the last ones. So again, with any cell in the table selected, we're going to go into our design tab. We're going to select first column and last column. And this sets this up for the default highlight colors, which in this case is this golden yellow color. We can see our first and our last column are now highlighted in different styles to bring attention to them for our reader's benefit. Next, we want to add a total row to the table. So this is going to show up at the bottom for us. Again, in our design area, we're going to select total row now from our style options. Once we've done this, it adds total to the left-hand side. The other thing it's done is on the right-hand side, it's actually calculated a total for us of all the values that are here in this right-hand column, and they total up to $1.2 million. We now want to change the name of this row from total to average, and so I'm going to select that cell, and inside of it, I'm just actually going to type average in. Okay. Once I've done that, we now want to modify the cells in this row to calculate the average sales for each month and for the year. All I need to do now that this row is in existence, when I click on it, you'll see this drop down arrow on the right hand side. When I select that, instead of none, I'm going to go to average. And so now what it's done, and you can actually see this in the formula row, is now the formula uh, subtotal 101 is average, and it's going to do that for the January column. If I'm satisfied with that, I can just drag this now all the way to the right, and it will now provide the average for each of these columns without having to adjust each of them individually. So now you'll see this. what was a total here previously of 1.2 million is now the average value of a little bit over $52,000. So we could actually do that with any of the values in here. So there are uh, several here that are already keyed up, but we can actually extend that by choosing other options that we want to drag across. This is one of the, the benefits of tables. And unfortunately, the, the core um, study guide doesn't go into a whole lot of depth of, in detail on, on how to use tables, but they can be a very powerful tool to add to your arsenal. All right, and our last task for section 3.2 is to go onto our bonuses worksheet and remove the formatting. So I'm going to hit Control page down to move to our next tab. I'm going to select any cell within our table. And now in Design, Table Styles, and right at the very bottom is an option that says Clear. And it, and it looks like this isn't quite going to show up here on the screen for you. So let me see if I can make that work. Um, but yeah, so right underneath it, new table style here, the next option down says clear. 
And when I do that, this now makes it just look like a, a natural or an original array that's within Excel. So this might be a little bit confusing. I don't necessarily know if I would suggest doing this to a table because the user may not realize that the, the table properties are present. But in our last video where we talked about converting a table to an array and then having to deal with formatting issues, this is a, a great example of uh, we can get rid of those stylistic things. Now in our design contextual ribbon tab, we can now convert to range. And once we confirm that, now this looks proper again for us, so there isn't any confusion. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe so you know when our next videos are going to get posted. Uh, I'd be honored if you'd uh, be so kind as to provide a thumbs up or a comment on how these are working out for you. Thanks so much for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.